Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included in the One Duplicate Challenge here with Nathan. At this moment I'm still shipping materials and breaking some more rock as you can see and it is a sight to behold. All the materials are being shipped over into one single little spot where we'll be able to pick it up easily and we'll be having such spots throughout the base. However, at this moment I grew a little bit tired of finding the food randomly. Don't get me wrong, we never really were in trouble food-wise and I figured it's not really necessary to go for food as long as it just comes to us in such large quantities. However, there's still a little bit of micromanagement I don't want to deal with and right now our body temperature for the plants has exceeded what they can take. That is mostly because of the hot water we actually got into this pool. But alas, I decided it's time to go for our first food setup. Now as announced previously, I'm gonna go for berry sludge. The main reason for that is it's the perfect space food and I wanna have something ready for later. If at some point we're not happy with the berry sludge or it gives us too much manual labor, we can still switch to another food source that potentially cooks itself. Essentially what I would like to see is a little kitchen and storage area for the food. And then after that, all the plants that we require. In this case, we need some bristle berries as well as sleet wheat. Now the plant section, I would like to function automatically. So we'll only be growing wild plants using pips to plant them. So without any further ado, let's get this going. We want to keep this probably the same size as we have our transit tube access point. What I definitely want to see here is a pneumatic door so I can dictate when I'm allowed to enter. And then the exit strategy is going to be a little bit different. We're going to add a secondary pneumatic door that is always going to be open, but only in order to get out and not in. Let's maybe reverse engineer the system. We want to have a ration box in order to store the berry sludge. Before that, it's going to come out of a microbe musher. And even before that, we need to send it through an electric grill, at least the gristle berries. We can cover all of this and a little bit more with one auto sweeper, which is perfect. So we can potentially have a setup that is cleaning and cooling our food. Actually thinking about it, if I put the auto sweeper one block up, I might be able to encase this. I'm going to use a little bit of a different color here. Actually, this one here could remain granite. Let's see, I would have to probably increase this by one and then add a metal block. Let's build this out of copper. The metal block is going to be necessary in order to help with the cooling and then everything is going to be encased in this contraption. And this way I believe the auto sweeper can reach these tiles and it can then distribute the items accordingly. So it would take out the frozen raw ingredients and fill up the electrical grill and the microbe musher. Then I'm going to cook some with the electrical grill, use the microbe musher and the food is going to be stored in here. And all I want is that the ingredients are coming into here automatically and I only really enter this room when there is something to cook. Let's say this is going to be the end of the room and the beginning of the first farm. We need a certain amount of plants to make this work and I calculated this to accommodate for two duplicates so we get double the amount of food that we actually require because eventually we're going to need a prisoner duplicate. But more to that later. According to my calculations we're going to need 14 gristle berries and 11 sleet wheat grains. And we're going to plant them in a 3x3 three three pattern. So 3 are going to be plants and then 3 metal tiles, another 3 plants and 3 metal tiles. What we could also do is just one after another. So another pattern that is possible is have a plant, 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 plant. Actually thinking about it, this might look a little bit better. On the other side, if I'm not mistaken, we could use the lamp in order to illuminate quite a few of them. Actually, that's a great idea. So we can have three plants, then we have two blocks like so. And in the center, we're going to add that lamp. And if you look at the pattern, it illuminates all three plant spots. So all we'll have to do is add a manual or mechanized airlock. Let's do that with, hmm, let's actually do it with gold because we're fancy, you know. And I think all we have to do is build the manual airlock here and then fill up these two tiles. And once we deconstruct the airlock, there's going to be a natural tile remaining, a gold ore tile, on which pips will then be able to plant the seeds. We will also have to make sure that the pips cannot actually exit. So I'm just going to add another pneumatic door and then we continue the pattern. So three more tiles would be plant tiles, then two blocks like so with another lamp. And that would be another three plants right there. So that's nine of 14 plants. Hmm, that is going to be a fairly long room, but it's okay. 
And by the way, the reason we are stretching the patterns like this is because the pips can only plant a certain amount of seeds in a specific range. So it's not going to be truly optimized with the lamps. As a matter of fact, this lamp here illuminates the same tile as this lamp here. So we only really need a lamp every other spot. So we can save a little bit on energy. They will have to run the entire time. So now we have three, six, nine, twelve spots. We need two more. Hmm. I guess we just need to add some more. Or we just forget about it because technically we have enough food. Considering this is a calculation for two duplicants. Yeah, I think for symmetry's sake, I'm gonna leave it like that. That is gonna be our gristle berry room. And look at that, it is even kind of perfect with the auto sweepers. We can have one here and one over there. I just love that. Now, there are a few things we need access to. Let me see, what was that? Like rails, for instance. Conveyor rails, we did not unlock that just yet, but it's an easy research. We need access to the conveyor chute and the rails. Conveyor loader, of course, also important. So let's maybe go ahead and research that first. Okay, now we need yet another wild farm. Let's open this up. Imagine this would be closed in the future. But in here, I would like to see something similar with sleet wheat. Three plants right there. And this actually doesn't require any lighting. So, hmm, with the sleet wheat, we could just go one after another in this case, since we don't need the lamps. Why not? We can add 10 plants. So that would be one, two, three, nine. 10 and then we can add the wall back like so that would be the size of our sleet wheat farm and then also right here it might add up just per wow this is amazing how does everything just add up i almost don't believe it now how are we gonna power this up good question we might have to tap into the main line or we just use this cable yeah that might be easier so for now we can bring this over and should we just power it from the top Hmm, considering the top is mostly gonna be empty space or just a tiny amount of gases that cannot really significantly impact anything, this might be a viable solution. So let me drag this cable all the way over and at the beginning of each room we're gonna add a joint plate and to be sure, because I might not want to replace this in the future, I'm gonna do it with a heavy watt conductive joint plate that can take, what, 50 kilowatts. And this is all gonna be lead like that and that so now we can take this power cable and get it all the way over though maybe for the kitchen i might want to go with a transformer yeah to be honest we could do everything with just one transformer i don't see a reason to actually use that much of the heavy cable so instead we're gonna make our way down here into a large power transformer we're gonna add that right there, heavy watt joint plate right here, and then we can actually bring this down into the transformer and then use the wire to go over and power everything up that we need to. I'm gonna go in from the bottom, but the auto sweepers I'm gonna take from the top. Also, the conveyors will actually need to be powered up. Okay, with that planning phase out of the way, we can go ahead and unpause the game, finally get this built, though probably the research will have to be done first. Where is my dupe? No, we are still digging. That's fine. That's fine. We can at least finish that layer before we tend to the new project. Alrighty, we're one step further and it occurred to me it will look a little bit strange if we have this obsidian tile right here. So I moved everything to the right. As a matter of fact, I did not move it yet to the right. So I will have to do that just one more block over and we're gonna be fine. But more importantly, I realized we probably need two spots for the auto sweepers to go. Let's say one auto sweeper could reside right here, so it doesn't actually reach this side here, but it will still be able to reach the ration box, for instance. Potentially, I'm actually not sure which tile you need to reach. But it honestly doesn't matter, all we need is yet another auto sweeper, for instance, right here, that is able to reach all of the machines and the ration box, but it will not be able to reach the frozen storage. The reason we want that is because we want to include somewhere right here where this auto sweeper cannot reach a um, conveyor loader to bring the extra berry sludge that we cannot store in the ration box to the permanent frozen storage. I guess it's going to become a little bit more clear once we get to it. Let me just rebuild what we have previously here. Wonderful, now we're finally making some progress here. For some reason, I was building quite inefficiently just one block after another. It's really weird. I feel like sometimes it has to do with lag. Now at this point it would actually be nice to be able to build everything. I'm gonna up the research machines here a little bit since they are not nearby anymore. I never actually do the job. 
We got some more Murph leaf seeds and by the way I do have some pip eggs here. This is the reason I actually decided to go for this idea because soon enough we can use those pips to populate our farms and hopefully by then we're gonna be ready. That actually reminds me, we need to get into the second phase of planning which is gonna involve having a aqua tuner and everything. Yeah, as a matter of fact we're gonna be using the thermal regulator as well as the thermal aqua tuner. And what we want to accomplish is a steady temperature in both of these rooms and then a pretty cold temperature in this room. In order to achieve that we first need a steam engine room. The steam engine is gonna reside on top of here and then we need enough space. Let's maybe use this division here. Actually this is too much space. Uh, well you know this way we have the possibility to add a bunch of reservoirs. Actually that might not be the worst of ideas. So we would end up with a joint plate right here we would have some liquid on the floor in order to cool these down. We then use one steam turbine like so and of course we hook everything up. We'll have to hop over here and hmm, how do I want to do this? Yeah it's not gonna be extremely convenient but it's gonna do for now. And then this would allow us to have a liquid reservoir as well as a gas reservoir. It uses up a little bit more space than I wanted but that is fine I guess. So I feel like this is gonna bother me. What if we have the gas reservoir only? So we have that right here. Then we could limit the room at the same spot as the upper room. We can then add our steam room here at the bottom. I'm also gonna make this three high. And I guess, you know, we could leave some space for the liquid reservoir. And by the way, I will get to how and why we actually use these reservoirs. I just want both of them in the contraption, but I don't see a good way to accommodate for them. Yeah, now at the bottom I don't really have enough space. I think I'm gonna set up the reservoir here and then I might give myself access briefly and then we can open this up one more block and this is gonna give us enough space for everything. Because what do we want in here? We want a thermal aqua tuner. For that we are gonna need a little bit more steel and we also want a thermal regulator. And we're gonna need three spaces for each of the contraptions. Yeah, I can actually see this working out. We might even be able to set up a mechanized airlock here. So if this were a mechanized airlock, I would actually be able to enter this for maintenance purposes without losing the functionality. Good, so in this case, apart from doing some research, we also have to do other things. And I just see this has become a little bit inefficient because I'm grabbing the water from anywhere. So I guess a much better solution would be to actually get water from here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That is gonna help a lot. Okay, do some research. Be efficient. Thank you. What was I about to say? I have no idea. I just wanted to say apart from doing research... Oh yes, of course, we have to craft some more steel. So that's what's gonna happen right here. Let's do 10 more crafts or so. Should be enough to get the aqua tuner and a thermal regulator, which I believe is cheaper. Alrighty, we're now one step further. I actually noticed that we do not really need a gas reservoir. A liquid reservoir is gonna do and so this design is gonna look a lot niftier. I also added a little bit of oil right here and a couple of gas pumps in order to pump out the room and I noticed there is an awful lot of hydrogen already right here. Just because we have a high gas density here all the hydrogen is worth quite a bit. So I decided we're gonna sort out the hydrogen and actually use it right away for our cooling loop. We're gonna do that as usual with a gas pipe element sensor and a high gas pressure vent. If we want to keep a certain gas then we need a NOT gate. Connect the sensor to the input and the output to the pressure vent. And if we then set this to hydrogen, the hydrogen is gonna flow through and everything is gonna be expelled out into space. Once the hydrogen flows through it can go all the way down here and now we can set up the hydrogen loop. Now we actually do not need three spaces for the thermal regulator because the input here is on the top. That means I can have my gas pipe thermo sensor right on top of here. And then the liquid pipe thermo sensor for the aqua tuner is gonna sit right there. Let's also make sure we already hook these up like so. And then we can get started with the insulated piping. We're gonna use igneous rock for that. Let's hook up the input first. And what we're basically doing with this is cooling down the hydrogen that we want to have flow through these pipes. 
the heat is going to be expelled into a room filled with water and eventually with steam and then the steam turbine is going to cool down the water producing some energy in the process and this way we will be able to get the correct temperatures for both of our farms and we're going to use the hydrogen in order to get the sleet wheat down to minus whatever degrees and also the food is going to be at least minus 18 degrees preferably a little bit lower which means it's going to be deep frozen. So let's just say we cool down the hydrogen with this machine and then it comes out a little bit cooler. We are then gonna make our way up and all the way over in order to then go ahead and loop back through these tiles. Now we'll have to see. With ores it's probably never good though. We could use wolframite. Let's actually see. With wolframite we have a thermal conductivity of 30 while with gold amalgam for instance we only have one of four. So that's a huge difference. What about iron and copper? Probably steel is what we have to go for. Yeah, iron is 8 and copper is 9. So all of them are useless except the wolframite is a little bit useful. I think I want to test it with steel. Let's craft a little bit of iron. Maybe 10 crafts or so. And then we can craft some more steel. It might be worth upgrading the pipes to steel instead of wolframite. Hang on, I just noticed I did not build this far enough. Yeah, this should actually be right there. Whoops, my bad. But we're gonna be coming back here with wolframite or steel pipes until we reach this spot, go all the way back. And it's important we do this on this tile and not the bottom tile because once we do the bottom tile, then the natural tiles get destroyed again. So this has to go through here. And hmm, I don't want to go through my food. So at this point... We also want to use radiant pipes for these two tiles and then we basically want to go back here. So we go down, over and down, turn up with the loop. Good, now with each thermal regulator and aqua tuner you will always have to make a bypass in case the hydrogen or coolant is already the right temperature. In this case what we want to do is just bypass it so it cannot actually enter. It's just gonna overflow and go into this pipe and then if we use a bridge right here going into this slot then it will be forced to go straight on and it cannot actually backflow. So this is how you have to add the bridge so the two green outputs meet. We also have to do something similar with the aqua tuner going in from the sensor here with insulated piping. I then want to go out from the aqua tuner directly into the liquid reservoir. From the reservoir out we're going to be doing the cooling and let's actually go over first and we only need to cool down this room and the room with the kitchen. In terms of radiant piping we can probably, let's actually check this out. We have lead, copper and iron. Copper has a conductivity of 120, lead only 70 and then what we have here 110. So I guess we could actually go with copper. We can just go all the way back here on this level using radiant copper pipes and then we switch to insulated igneous rock again, move all the way over. Actually let's hop over here so we don't really interfere with anything and we uh, what do we want to do we want to go back into the aqua tuner and I guess yeah we can do that right there. We also need the bypass for this one in case the liquid has the right temperature and for that we go down as well over and then with the liquid bridge we want to join up with the other output there. Then there's one last thing to do and that is the output from the steam turbine we're gonna dump that right on top of the aqua tuner. And before I forget, a little bridge here, just so we hop over the food tile. Okay, I actually like that. Do we have some steel by now? No, I used it all up for the thermal aqua tuner. You know, honestly, I don't think we need to waste our steel on this. 30 conductivity is plenty. Steel probably would have 100 or 110, but we don't need a lot of conductivity. We just need steady conductivity. And once the room is actually cold enough, we don't really have to do anything. Let's actually build it with wolframite. We're not cooling down this room, but we are cooling down these two tiles here for the food. And that's gonna be it. Now I can just keep on building. Wonderful. Okay, looks like we're almost done building everything. I unfortunately missed that the pips already hatched and now I will have to learn a skill to actually bring them upstairs. But yeah, everything is in place. I cleaned up the power cables a little bit. It looks much niftier now. All the pipe work is in place, as you can see right there. And basically now our goal is going to be to populate this area first. In order to do that, we will have to cool it down substantially. Otherwise, the sleet wheat is just gonna go bad again before it can be planted. 
Now I figured what we could do is just extend this by a little bit and then set up a gas vent here. We are gonna make this a liquid lock and first make this room keep this a complete vacuum. I'm also already attempting to set up the first natural task with the door trick. You just have to make sure it is encased on the left and right side. And with all of this built, let's deconstruct this door right away. And what do we get? A beautiful gold amalgam tile. Nice. And then I guess we can just keep on going. We can actually build all of the doors. Why not? Another thing I want to ensure is that the pips plant from the left to the right. That is a tip you guys gave me. And so I'm just placing a ladder on top of the tile where I don't want them to plant just yet. By the way, if you use this trick and you get a cracked tile, that means you have some debris inside of it that you first need to get rid of. We're almost done pumping out the room. I will then establish the liquid lock here so we can fill up this room with oxygen and already start cooling it down without interfering with the other room since that one is still gonna be a vacuum. There are my last three airlocks. Uh, no, I was standing in there, my bad. We can rectify that right away, come back here. I find this so convenient with the highest priority because usually it's not the closest dupe in a multiple dupe safe game that actually gets the top priority. And of course here in this playthrough it's always the same guy. Hmm, look at that, I actually got some more pip eggs. I think I'm gonna use that opportunity and this time around I'm not gonna forget to actually bring them along. I already had an automatic dispenser here. Critter eggs, we want pip eggs and let's make that the highest priority. And then they will be able to hatch here and in the next episode we can do all of the planting. So today's episode is for the building and next episode we can actually start cooking and everything. There we go, two eggs. Yeah, that was two eggs, right? Good, that was technically everything I needed from the automatic dispensers. Now they will be able to hatch here within 20 or so cycles. And we can take our sweet time to actually finish this. This also means we don't necessarily need the pips here anymore. I'm actually gonna get rid of them. By the way, look at the horizontal speed my dupe already has. It's like I cannot even watch him at the high speed setting. It's just wee. Of course, with the Atmos suit, it is a tiny bit slower, but we're gonna improve on that by making him walk on metal tiles for the most part. And by the way, these metal tiles here are not necessary. I'm just using them for the looks. Now we can get rid of all of these and the ladders I'm gonna keep in place as long as we haven't planted yet. I'm now also taking care of the other room and by the way I noticed we might not even have needed the electrical grill. Because if I check out berry sludge recipe here it looks like it uses the bristle berries. And if I'm not mistaken it's the gristle berries that you actually cook up not the bristle ones. Yeah this might bite us in the ass in the future. On the other side we still have access to other recipes such as barbecue. But if I already have the electric grill in here maybe I should have added the gas range as well. Oh well, for now this is going to be the berry sludge station, but we could potentially add a meat farm here at the bottom and then make some barbecue as well. Yeah, let's actually worry about that another time. I want to get everything prepared here. We need more manual airlocks and start getting those natural tiles in this room as well. I'm actually also going to make this room here a liquid lock so we can get rid of the polluted oxygen in here, maybe fill it up with some water as well. You know, I think one thing oxygen not included should improve is the pumping of the gases. It's at micrograms for at least 5 cycles now and that kind of becomes annoying. Though I'm actually making good progress here with building the natural tasks. This goes much smoother than previously because I know what I'm doing. Finally it is a vacuum. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. That also means we can get rid of the pump and everything. And then the rest of the gases are going to disappear over time. So all we have to do is establish the liquid lock. And I think I can do that with... Yeah, look at that. We're bringing some oil. It's dropping here. We don't need more than that. We can get rid of the bottle emptier. I'm gonna sweep up everything. <sighs> Let me see. We probably don't want to do these two spots. Only sweep up here and the rest. So we at least keep this little oil piece in place. There we go, that's perfect. I have some oil in here and if I build this tile then these two rooms are gonna be separate and I can even add a door though ah, that's not necessary. But what we want to see is some oxygen in there so what I could do is already connect this. I did set up a filter here though this needs to be set to oxygen so we only allow oxygen to go through and it will then go up and pump this room full of 2000 grams of oxygen per tile. Once that is done, we should be able to establish the aqua tuner room that is actually needed to cool this down. 
But there we go, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And we're gonna be doing this room first because that needs to be substantially cooler than the other room here. So first complete this room and then close it off before we tend to the gristleberry stuff. We will also be establishing this liquid lock here with just a drop of oil. But yeah, look at that, it's coming along now. There it is, liquid lock already established. I'm gonna mop up as of this point, so this will also be mopped up and I only have this drop left. Then we can add a pump and actually get this going in the next episode. So I'm pretty happy with the outcome of this episode. We completely designed the concept of the farms and hopefully that is gonna pay off in the next episode when we start to finally plant and cook those ingredients. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.